In this short video, I want to show you how to create a piece of costume jewelry or whatever kind of jewelry you would like in Painter 2021. And I will be using these dynamic plugins to do this. If you haven't tried dynamic plugins before, you should. You will like them. They'll do something a little bit different. And so to get started, I'm going to create a new dynamic plugin layer. Liquid Metal opens this dialog box. Here's your tools. Here's this, the new layer. It does have a different icon because it is a dynamic plugin floater layer one. And until you convert it to a default one, this is what it will look like. So I'm going to pick paintbrush tool here and I'm going to start drawing. So you can see I'm painting with this kind of metallic looking, it almost looks like a chrome tube. You can change what is reflected down here in the reflection map, but I'm going to stay with standard metal. And just draw, come in, and if you're trying this, just draw some random shapes. They don't have to be anything special. And for this short video, I'm not really doing anything special at all. I'm just drawing some shapes that I think might be interesting. This is really kind of fun to play with. You can rain it on here, which I'm not going to do right now, because we'll just fill this with random drops of this liquid metal. Also, it's very easy to get carried away and play with this maybe a little bit too much, but this is going fine. You can move your last stroke around if you want to change it, but it is the last stroke. Once I've placed this and I select the brush again, I can draw additional strokes, but they won't move. Only the last stroke that you've drawn will move. So this is a pretty random piece of jewelry, but that's okay. That's kind of what I wanted. And what I'm going to do now is just click OK. So now you can see it's on here. You can see the highlight of it. It is a liquid metal layer. So if you want to adjust or add more or erase on this, you double click the layer and it will bring up the dialog box. And you can do that again, whatever you want. You could clear it, change the size of the brush. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And so I can start drawing little extra things if I want. And when you change the size and such, you can see that it will update what I've drawn. So see, it's updating a little bit here. So I'm just messing around, showing you that I can continue to work on this and add more and more as I want. And when I'm done again, I will click OK. And then I want to go ahead and convert it to a regular layer. So I will right click on it and convert to default layer. If I don't do that, I really can't do anything with it. So I'm going to convert it to a default layer. You see the icon has changed and now it's a regular layer. I'm going to scale this a little bit. Edit. I'll do a free transform. And I'm going to duplicate this layer. So click on here and duplicate layer. Now I've got a second layer on there just like that. And I'm going to do an edit and flip horizontal. And I'm doing this because I want to create a symmetrical kind of piece. Now this looks really maybe a little more confusing than I would want. So I'm going to back off and do one step in between before I do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut a selection right down this part of it. And I may want to move the selection a little bit. That's fine. Move the selection and I'm looking to align it maybe on some of these little pieces. So I'm going to go right there and then I'm going to do a control X. Cut that out. And it's left me with a clean seam there. Now I'm going to duplicate that layer. So I've got a duplicate and I'm going to do edit, flip horizontal, and I'm going to align this layer right so I've got one piece. And I think that'll be fine. So I'm going to select this two layer. So I'm holding the shift key, select both these layers, and I am going to collapse the layers. And now I have one layer. So I'm going to zoom in, control plus, and I'm going to come in here, and I can use the eraser, or I'm just going to use the lasso tool, and 
select these areas, backspace them out. You can do as little or as much as you want. You just want to clean up a little bit for the sake of what we're doing here. So now I have this nicely done piece of costume jewelry that may or may not look like something. What I want to do though is fill some of these areas with stones or gold or something. So I'm just going to go around and select these. And so I'll hold the shift and with the magic wand I'm just going to select all of these white areas. Something more complicated you probably want to use a different selection method but this is perfectly fine. Okay so now I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to fill it with the current color and on my color layer now I'm going to select a few more just just to add some more interest so I'm going to leave the outside edges blue hold the shift key and I'm selecting these interior shapes here and with those I think what I'll do is fill them with a little more turquoise on a new layer and I'm going to select a few more layers Hold down the shift key, select, create a new layer, and I'm going to fill those with a new color, and that will be a little more green. And then finally, on my last layer, I'm going to go back and I'm going to select this middle one. I am going to create a new layer, and I'm going to fill this with quite a bit brighter green. So I think that'll make for a little more interesting piece of jewelry. So let's rearrange these layers a little bit. So I'll drag layer 4 up to the top, layer 3 up there, and layer 2, and layer 1. But I'll start at the top right now, and what I'm going to do is use another dynamic plugin layer from this menu. And that will be dynamic plugin bevel world. Now this creates again a new plugin layer and brings up this dialog box. You can edit this, do whatever you want, but now we're on our top layer that was green, and I'm adding some bevel to make this look more like a stone. I'm going to fill the outside edge of it around here with a little bit of black, so my outside color, I'm going to choose black. Maybe I ought to choose blue. Now watch as I move this slider up. I get a border around the original, and so it kind of covers up a little bit of the white line and I might want to smooth it a little bit just so it doesn't look quite as chunky. I smooth that one a little bit. That looks okay. Turn on or off and I'm going to go ahead and move down to layer 3 now and I'll do the same thing. Dynamic plugins, bevel world. And so it brings up the dialog box. It's still trying to use the blue, so I might want to make the outside portion a little bit smaller, maybe a little bit darker. And it still carries over from the last time I used it the same amount uh, of smoothness. And so I think that looks all right. So I will go ahead and click OK. If you change your mind, you can go back to each one of these layers and double click on them and make changes. So I select layer 2, Bevel World. And now it's done the same thing to this next layer. Now I'm going to move down the bevel or the outside portion. It's a little too wide. And I'm going to darken the color just because I like contrast with a little bit darker color. And smoothness is still turned on pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that like it is. And I will say OK. And lastly, I will do layer 1. So I will come and do Bevel World for Layer 1. And now the dialog box has popped up and I'll move it down and you can see that there's nice bevel on all of the outside. I'll make it a little bit, the outside portion a little bit smaller. And when I'm ready with the look that I like, move it around, I will click OK. The last thing I need to do is convert each one of these layers to default layers. So I right click. Convert to default layer, right click, convert to default layer, right click, convert to default layer, right click, convert to default layer. And when all of that is done, I'll go ahead and select all these layers and collapse them. 
So now I have one piece of really pretty detailed jewelry made with a couple of the dynamic plugins. And I'm going to go ahead and scale it just a little bit. Do a free transform. And that is one way to create this little jewelry look for your images. It's a great way to work using some of these dynamic plugin layers. Give it a try. I think you'll find once you get used to how they work, you're really going to like what you do. So that is creating jewelry with dynamic plugin layers in Painter 2020.